At this point, you guys know I like to kick it old school, all right? Uh, so far, I've had the opportunity to talk to Dina Martin. That is the daughter of Dean Martin, one of the coolest cats of all time. You know, I'm very, uh, I'm, I'm obsessed with 1950s and 1960s contemporary art. The lifestyle, the music was incredible. Of course, the motion pictures. And uh, to have the opportunity to talk to, talk to somebody who's related to uh, this person, to talk to somebody who's related to Sammy Davis Jr., is a big, big treat for me. And so very much, I've been looking forward to this conversation all week long. I am joined live by Tracy Davis. Tracy Davis is the daughter of uh, the iconic figure that was Sammy Davis Jr. Tracy, thank you so much for spending some time with us this morning. How are you? I am fine, thank you. You're in Alamogordo? I am, yes. Yes. Have, have you spent time my, in Southern um, My kid's dad was born in Alamogordo. That is the craziest thing ever. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's who the thunk it? Right, out of everybody who I've had the opportunity to speak to on the phone, um, a lot of them are like, oh, I've gone through Albuquerque. That's about it. I got to tell you, Tracy, um, I, at this point, uh, I, I've, I've had the opportunity uh, to interview Dina Martin. I'm having the opportunity mm-hmm. to talk to you now. And if I can just get Nancy Sinatra on the line one of these days, I'll be set. There you, you have your own Rat Pack daughters. That's it. Yeah, because I, I'm obsessed with you, with your dad. And his friends, you know, I'm a, I'm a Peter Lawford guy. Joey Bishop was cool, but Sinatra, uh, Sammy Davis, and Dean Martin, I'm talking the three coolest guys in the world. And up to this day, still, you know, what was it like? What was it like? Before we jump into your book, what was it like being the daughter of such of such an iconic figure? Well, I, I, I consider myself extremely lucky. Um, those, they are, uh, every single one of them, they're icons. And it's kind of funny how they've come back um, and are, are popular all over again. I, I'm I'm amazed at the outpouring that I've gotten. Just people just want to talk about him. And um, and there is something about Sammy Davis Jr. And what he never did was figure out what it is about Sammy Davis Jr. You know what I'm saying? You know how people say like there's something about him, and then you try and figure it out, and then you run it to ground. He never did it. And I think that that he remained unique and and um, and a and a fabulous entertainer and a pretty darn good father. Yeah, no doubt. Let me ask you, whenever you were young, do you remember times when you and your dad were hanging out with Sinatra and Dean Martin? Did you guys ever have like family gatherings or get-togethers and things like that? Oh, sure. They used to come when we lived um, when we lived in Beverly Hills. They used to come, uh, Frank and Dean, to uh, over to the house sometimes late at night after a show or they would hang out and play cards. And I used to sneak down and sit on my dad's lap while they were playing cards and yeah. listen to them tell stories and curse and all kinds of good stuff. So, um, yeah. And then, and then when I got married, um, Frank Sinatra, uh, that was my bachelorette party. I was hanging with my dad and Frank Sinatra and the McGuire <laughs> sisters backstage in Vegas at the Nugget. Oh, my god! So gosh. it was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. That's I, I can't even imagine being in a room. I mean, again, I, I look at your dad and these two guys. For me, you know, starstruck galore. I, I just, I couldn't imagine. I'd faint. I'd pass out and I'd faint. I'd have a heart attack right there to be sitting in a room with three people with the stature of what the of what your dad and his friends had. They had this remarkable friendship, I think, that translated um, history. And also, you know, they, they're doing films together and hanging out on stage together and kind of running the town in, in Vegas when you're in when you're 30-ish. I can't think of anything better than that. Yeah, no doubt. Speaking with Tracy Davis, daughter of the uh, iconic figure Sammy Davis Jr. I'm a big biopic guy when it comes to iconic figures. Uh, back, I think, in mm-hmm. the late 90s, HBO did one of those HBO movies where I think Don Cheadle played your dad. You had um, Ray Liotta played uh, Sinatra. And um, it was interesting because I guess it showed a personal side of how close these guys were together. I was really mm-hmm. fascinated by that because, yeah, sure, there, there's there's Hollywood duos or teams, but these guys were legit buddies and they hung out and they had each other's back. And I thought that was pretty cool. Well, and I think, you know, at the time, too, the, the 60s were so turbulent, but also that, they, you know, in our household, we, we got death threats that was that was probably a weekly occurrence you know things written on our cars or whatever so when you said they had their back yeah literally you know looking out for one another because there was a faction of people that weren't okay with it but for the most part i think people when they were that group and they had that show called the and they called it the summit and that was at the sands and anybody who was anybody was there i think that um I think that that kind of cemented them in history in terms of just probably the greatest bunch of entertainers who got together and did shows because they thought it was cool and it was a kick. 
not because, boy, we're going to make a whole bunch of money and you come out and whatever. They, they hung out on stage and just kind of ad-libbed it the whole time. Everybody sang some songs, everybody whatever. I remember Dean Martin, you know, the, the, the famous thing when you see the, the film uh, of it. Dean Martin picks my dad up and says, I want to thank the, the NAACP for this award. <laughs> That's right. Yep. It's the funny thing. <laughs> but they, they poke fun at each other and they loved each other. So it was, it was, it was a good time for my dad, a very good time. We're joined live this morning uh, with Tracy Davis. Tracy Davis is the daughter of Sammy Davis Jr. She just wrote a book about her pop. And uh, awesome conversation we're having. Uh, Tracy, you know, uh, interesting week. Today, the 16th, is the 24-year mark. Your dad, your dad passed away 24 years ago. Um, I think three days ago, it was the 13th that Sinatra passed away. Um, I think it was the 13th, May 13th, 1998. So kind of strange the way they, they, they passed away, you know, so close together in terms of same month, day, thing like that. I began reading your book, and I noticed that uh, my impression was that you and your pop really formed a close relationship toward the end of his life. Does that seem? Does that sound about right? Uh, yeah, we did because ever my dad was dying and my son was starting, you know, growing in my stomach. So we had nine months, like basically a great nine months together of talking through issues and whatever and and problems and good times and bad times. And yeah, there were times we both cried. I remember my dad telling me, looking at me, and he had tears in his eyes. And I said, "What?" And he said, "I'm just scared today." Yeah. And I looked at my dad, I mean, even now I'm welling up, you know, and, but just to be able to, to hold his hand, uh, you know, it was an honor and a privilege to have that time with him. And I'm, I, I thank God every day that I had that time. Yeah. And he did see my son be born and he did know his name was Sam. And, um, he had some time to visit with him before he passed away, which was three weeks later, yeah. May 16th. We're speaking with Tracy Davis this morning. She is the daughter of Sammy Davis Jr. Now we're running out of time. You talk about the, uh, how your dad more or less, I, I, he got snubbed from doing the Kennedy inauguration. Now, I don't know if that biopic what, that I read reference earlier was accurate, but it almost kind of seemed like Kennedy rode this wave off of Sinatra and your dad and Dean Martin's popularity to help get him, get him elected. Once he got elected, his advisors are like, well, you used them. Now don't, don't have anything to do with them. I guess because of Sinatra's mob connections. I don't know if that was true or not, but what was that? Uh, w- w- was your dad, did, did he carry that along? Was he pretty upset about that whole thing about the, the, the Kennedy Never got stuff? over it. Never did. Yeah. Never got over it. It stuck with him. I won't say like it consumed him or anything, but, but he thought about it often, you yeah. know, it really affected him because he really busted his butt and thought this is gonna this is he didn't do it to to go to the inaugural but he was pretty much thinking well i'm gonna go i've done so much work and you know we know each other and we've been to each other's houses i would think i would be invited and he wasn't and it, and it stung it stung for a long time you know there was the part in that movie that i thought was funny when um there's a part where after kennedy gets elected sinatra hears that uh, kennedy's gonna be coming back into california and instead of staying with him, they tell him he's going to be staying at Bing, Crosby house, Bing Crosby's house, and Sinatra flips out, you know, because Crosby was, uh, you know, he was going for the other guy during that election. And uh, yeah, it, totally. I mean, they, they rode this, this, this wave off of their popularity for him to get elected, and then he more or less kind of turned his back on him, which I thought was kind of messed up. But I got to tell you, I could probably talk to you for hours you know what I mean? Uh, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan. I love your dad. I love his work. I think he was incredible. I love the quote that you gave earlier. He was a five foot six, 120 pound. Uh, you know, he was a giant. You know what I mean? And the way he used his talents to get through the tough times. I mean, he was he was an incredible human being. And I, I wish I wish these guys were still around just just to be able to like watch him do interviews on TV. But I can't thank you enough for, for for giving me an opportunity to talk to you. Like I said, I'm a huge fan, and all I need now is uh, Nancy Sinatra to come online to come online with me, and then I'm gonna have all you guys. You know. It's, it's gonna happen one of these there you days. Go. Again, hey, I appreciate you yeah, very if much. Not Nancy, get Tina. Tina will do it. E- yeah, either. You know, I, I'm I'm up for anybody. I'm up for anybody. But again, uh, appreciate the time you've given me. And again, the book's called The Personal Journey with My Father. Uh, it's uh, a story of uh, Tracy Davis and Sammy Davis Jr. Again, thank you so much for the time and uh, best of luck with everything in the future. Thank you for having me.